Now we're going to have a quick review of the 12 verb tenses in English. You should have studied these before now, so this will be a, just a very quick review. First we have the simple tenses. Simple present, simple past, and simple future. Simple present is used to show something that happens regularly or doesn't happen regularly. It shows habit. So Jerry plays tennis every day shows us something that he does on a regular basis. The verb plays, you'll notice, has an S on the end. For singular subjects, we have to have an S on the verb in simple present tense. If it's a plural subject, you won't have any ending on the verb. For simple past tense, we want to show something that happened in the past and finished in the past at a particular time. Jerry played tennis yesterday is a specific time when he did some action. To show the action that happened in the simple past for regular verbs, we just use ED. The hard part is for the irregular verbs like sit or eat. You have to remember that there's a special past tense form for each of those irregular verbs. To show simple future, we use the word will plus the simple form of the verb. So will play is used to show future tense. Then we have the progressive tenses. Progressive tenses show that an action is continuing at a, peri a certain period of time. Present progressive shows what is happening right now. To make the present progressive, we need two parts of the verb. We need a be verb and an ing. If your subject is singular, then you'll use the singular be verb is. If your subject is plural, like Jennifer and Mary, you use the be verb are plus the ing. For past progressive, we want to show an action that was continuing at a certain time in the past. Again, we need two parts of the verb, be verb and ing. But for past progressive, you use past tense be verbs was and were. Was is the singular, were is the plural, and your ing. Future progressive shows something that will be happening continuously at a time in the future. To make the future progressive, we use the word will plus be and the ing. Will is a, a modal that has to have a simple form of a verb after it, so we don't use is or are. After will, you use the simple form be plus your ing. Now we're going to talk about the perfect tenses. Present perfect is used to show something that happened in the past before now at a non-specific time or something that happened regularly in the past lots of times but again at non-specific times. The emphasis with present perfect is to show that something happened in the past before now. So it's related to the present, but it shows something from the past. So in the first example, Steve has eaten sushi before. When did he eat sushi? It was sometime before now, but we don't know when. To make the present perfect, we need two parts of the verb. We need the present tense of have, and if it's singular, we use has. And we need a past participle. The past participle of eat is eaten. The past perfect is a little more difficult. Past perfect has nothing to do with the present. That's what's different from present perfect. Present perfect now is important. In past perfect, now is not important. When we talk about past perfect, we're talking about two actions in the past. And we want to show that one of the actions happened before the other action in the past. So in this example, Alan had not studied before he took the test. What are the two actions? You have studied and took. So we want to show that in the past, before he took the test, 
he had not studied. This is a negative, but your past perfect is made by using the past tense of have, which is had, and the past participle of study, which is studied. This verb here is just simple past tense. The one that happened before the other is going to be the past perfect. Then we have future perfect. Future perfect refers to two actions in the future. Again, now is not important with future perfect. In this example, I will have seen the new movie six times. By next week, the two points in time are seeing the movie and next weekend. Sorry, weekend. So before next weekend, I will have seen the movie. To show the thing that happens before the other, I use the future perfect, will have seen. I use will plus the verb have in its simple form because it's after will, and the past participle of see, which is seen. This future perfect shows me that this will happen before this time. Finally, we have the perfect progressive tenses, and these combine what we already learned about the perfect with what we already learned about the progressive. Present perfect progressive must have three parts to the verb. You need to have have or has, because that makes it perfect. Perfect right there. You need been, which is the past participle of be, because that's also part of making it perfect. And you need the ing with your, your b, because that makes it progressive. Present perfect progressive shows that something started before now and has continued and may continue even longer. Present perfect progressive is not very different from present perfect. The emphasis is on the time that the action goes on. Past perfect progressive shows that something uh, was happening in the past and may have uh, been going on before something else. He had been sleeping for 10 hours. That means that he was doing this action continuously for the duration of 10 hours. The focus is on the length of time that he did this. Past perfect progressive is made with a past tense of have, so we have had again, then a past participle of the be verb been, and an ing. Future perfect progressive emphasizes a continuous action in the future that lasts continuously. We will have been studying for a month has a similar meaning with the future perfect we will have studied for a month, but because it's perfect and progressive, we're emphasizing the continuous action for some period of time.